So today I want to talk about methods. So obviously scam methods that people use to steal money from you. Now the first method that I would like to discuss in today's video is fake checks or check fraud to put it bluntly. Check fraud is one of the easiest scams. However, this is a big however, so listen up. Check fraud is also one of the easiest scams to get indicted for. So please don't take this information and run off with it like you just opened up Pandora's box to financial freedom. That's not it. This is not that. Now the very first step to cashing a fake check is obviously obtaining information, right? Now the easiest way of obtaining information is by stealing it. So as you can imagine, mailmen, just for an example, are like deer during hunting season. I mean, it gets wild out here. I mean, mail carriers are getting robbed and extorted on the daily. And it's it's an unfortunate situation, you know, but that's just the reality of it. I'm just relaying the information. They get their access keys taken from them. And while it's extremely risky for these fraudsters to do this because they are now stepping out of the lane of white collar crimes fraud. And now they're stepping into physically robbing people. You know, so that's a whole nother plethora of charges, you know, but the United States Postal Service and, you know, law enforcement agencies around America don't really seem to be doing anything to combat this. The lawmakers are turning a blind eye to it. Everyone just wants others to think they're doing something. In reality, no one's doing anything. And that's the real problem. They're in bed with the fraudsters, right? And they're getting paid percentages, you know, based on their cooperation in these operations. Another method people are using is the inside job method, where they basically are getting jobs at the at their local bank branches, right? And this is super profitable for fraudsters. You know, not only do they now have a respectable job within a banking institution, they now, you know, if they climb the ladder, the corporate ladder, and get promoted to any other position higher than a bank teller, they will now have access to a whole bunch of personal information, including data that can be used to successfully do this method, cashing fake checks. The final method of obtaining information is through Telegram, obviously. Now, Telegram is like a five-star buffet for scammers, right? And because they they have a, a, a plethora, an abundance of personal information that can be used, you know, via different sources. All they have to do is pay a small fee as little as $25, and that information will be sent directly and instantly to them. Now, cooking checks has always been a thing, right? For as far back as I can remember, right? And some of these check fraud photoshoppers, rather, for lack of better wording, some of them are so good, all right, that they sell templates to other scammers. Templates that can be used to easily make 10K in a day. Now, the next step, obviously, you got to have an account for the money to be deposited into, right? And you don't want this account to be linked to your SSN, your social security number. Now, 10 years ago, this step required a whole bunch of networking and connecting with various different sources, connecting with like-minded individuals who are also looking to commit check fraud, which I can only imagine is pretty difficult. However, nowadays, especially with the help of the internet and the help of open ups, cashing out has become almost too easy. Now you're probably like Jack, what even is an open up? An open up, to put it bluntly, is a bank account that was opened up with the sole intention of committing bank fraud check fraud, whatever type of fraud you want, credit card fraud, debit card fraud, just fraud in general. These accounts can be opened up instantly with stolen identities and they can be aged as well with any banking institution. Many scammers even create open ups and they age them, right? Which essentially they can then go on to sell them anywhere from $100 to $10,000, depending on the banking institution. First off, the, you, the information that was used, even credit score, they can go as far as even getting fake loans with these stolen identities, with these open ups. Some of these open ups even come with fake IDs, which just makes cashing out 10 times easier. Now for the fraudsters who are a bit more skilled intellectual, they will create shell accounts. Now, what is a shell account? A shell business account rather, um, is an account, you know, a business bank account. And ever since the pandemic, right, it has shown everyone that with a PPP loan, right, it has shown everyone how simple it is to create a fake business. Now, shell accounts are created with the sole purpose, the sole intention of mirroring a already legitimate business, you know, out there in America somewhere, which usually are the ones who write out the biggest checks. Then after the scammer has obtained the information, got the stolen identity, it is now time for recruitment. However, before we get into all that, I first want to mention a super, you know, easy method that's been going on for in, in recent years what people are doing now instead of cooking checks 
you know, with Photoshop and, you know, all this crazy stuff, <laughs> they will now just steal a, a legitimate check, right? Whether that's from the mail, you know, through the postal service or just the individual themselves. They will then marinate that check in a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and acetone. When combined, these, you know, substances can remove ink from paper very easily. They will then add in their own information to their open up, right? Add in their own custom amount just so the check hits for a little bit more than what was initially written out. Now, many banking institutions today let you cash checks through their mobile banking app, right? Now, for fraudsters, this is just like the best feature ever rolled out by, you know, banking institutions. They will obviously use this feature to their advantage, right? Cash fake checks to their open up and never even have to step foot inside of a bank. But anyways, back to recruitment. Now, what scammers are doing, you know, to cash out is they are essentially recruiting elderly people, right? Because no one's going to question grandma. You know, nobody's going to think she's trying to commit check fraud. So they recruit these people to walk into these banks, right? Cash these fake checks into their account that's in their name. Now, recruiting is one of the hardest parts of this method, right? And that's why a lot of scammers really don't even use this method anymore, right? The new method is acetone or isopropyl alcohol, right? And then you just add in your own information, add in your custom amount. Then you hit the check deposit feature, right? after you let that thing dry out for a little bit. Another popular method that many scammers are using nowadays, right, is they will essentially clean the money through purchasing money orders and cashier's checks. Now, the more technically inclined, you know, this person is, they can even convert, you know, thousands of dollars into cryptocurrency, which will then be virtually untraceable if done correctly. Now, with fraud, obviously comes consequences, right? So you must understand the implications, right, that you can get yourself into when committing check fraud. The first is surveillance, obviously, right? Cameras are everywhere. It's 2023. Cameras are everywhere, even in that Bitcoin machine that you didn't think was recording you. So many scammers, you know, plan out and map every step that they're going to take to successfully cash out, right? They plan everything down to a T. It's almost like they plan everything, but then they forgot the last step, which is the most important step, when you're going to go cash out, alter your appearance, wear a anonymous mask, do something. And you won't even believe this. Like a lot of these scammers will go and cash out at an ATM, a face out and everything. Like they don't know that ATMs have a little microscopic camera inside that records you every time you go out to it. It's always recording. It's live. It's always recording. I mean, literally every check fraud case that I've looked into the defense rolled out footage from the ATM showing the person's face. I mean, it's giving retardation. Isn't that what the kids say nowadays? It's giving, it's giving idiot. Chapter one in the scam Bible is knowing your shit. That's what it's called. That's what chapter one is called, knowing your shit. So before you want to go and participate in fraudulent activity, you might want to do your homework, right? And that, so you can actually know what you're doing. Now, as we all know, scamming is like the wave right now. Everyone even wants to... Everybody wants to be a scammer. Everyone wants to be a swiper, right? But many people do not really understand what comes with that life. Sleepless nights, waking up in a cold sweat, having to look over your shoulder every time you leave the house. You know, military style clearing your house when you come home because you're afraid someone might be under your bed or in the closet waiting for you to, you know, slip up so they can pop out and shoot you in the face because you cashed out for 7000 on them and now they want they get back. And it really gets like that, you know, and that's really the reality for a lot of these scammers, right? Because one thing you got to understand is a lot of people do really do this, right? Now, the scammers in Nigeria and stuff are not worried about anything like that because, my bad, cars are going crazy outside, but like, Scammers in Nigeria are not worried about that because they are looked at. They are looked at as heroes in their community for finding methods to take money from you, from Americans, right? From people in first world countries. Their police and politicians really don't care, right? So they don't they don't have a panic attack when they see law enforcement. In first world countries, scammers are frowned upon. They get no respect in America, in the UK, and Canada, right? But scammers in Nigeria and stuff over there, they they people love them because they run it up a bag, right? You have to understand this too. A lot of these dudes are petty, bro. Fraudulent transactions being made on their debit card or credit card, whatever the case was, right? But, you know, stealing resources from families, you know, taking food out of the mouths of children, I don't respect that whatsoever, right? And that's really how I look at it. That's really how I look at it, 
right? You are stealing from individuals who really do not have a lot of money. It's just petty. Like, I don't get it. It's so much easier to scam these institutions and you get so much more money. Now they have to contact their banking institution, get a hold of the fraud departments, right? And beg them for mercy, you know, because you scammed them for less thousand dollars, two thousand dollars because you wanted a new flat screen TV for your living room. So to all my scammers out there around the world, first off, I would just like to say thank you for stopping by, listening to what I have to say. However, I would like for you to reconsider your actions. You are ruining people's lives, right? And you are causing even more stress for these individuals who already have enough on their plate. I mean, it's not right. It's really not right. And I hope all you scammers that scam individuals, I hope all of y'all get caught. I swear to God, right hand over my heart, I hope you get caught. And I hope you get prison time. Scamming someone for 10K does not make you intelligent. I just want you to know that. It does not make you the MacGyver of scamming. Right? There's people who've scammed 10 billion in two days. You're really just another bum ass scammer, right? Stealing from individuals who, and you never made it big. So now you're just targeting the small fries, you know, the small guys who re can't really stand up for themselves. And y'all are not tough either. Y'all need to cut it out with that. A lot of you scammers are not tough, right? Y'all would crack in the first two days you get locked up. I mean, I know these, I know these people, you know, personally, I know y'all personally, y'all, hey, y'all are not tough. I know these petty ass scammers, right? And they will snitch on themselves and they will snitch on everyone involved to get a reduced sentence. I mean, I know the real them. You can cap to everybody else, but you can't cap to me.